What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. It's Taco Tuesday. I hope you had your taco dreams come true. Um, <laughs> some of this stuff that gets to be almost comical. Um, I'm going through, I, I, you know, sometimes you play on words. Um, I was in the workshop yesterday working on some of the wood from the red brick house that we're going to use to um, renovate. Uh, to build the cabinets and things like that. And um, that house is really important to me for a number of reasons because I believe it's a big part of our history. It's two and three years old and things. And I'm fixing that beyond just for myself. I'm fixing it because it's been there for 203 years. I want to, I would love to be able to say I could see it for another 200 years. I don't think I have that many years left. Okay. Let's hope I can make it to a hundred years, much less, you know, another 200 years, but be that as it may, you know, I, I want people who have been tied to that house to be able to see that it's still living on and be able to come by and see the place and reminisce about their life and things in that house, as well as all the history that's happened there, but be that as it may. So I was working in the workshop on this wood and I was trying to use, you know, you're looking at this piece of wood that just looks terrible. It just looks, you know, awful. It's dirt covered. It's got nails and everything else. And I'm working in the workshop. And my point being is, is something may not look good on the surface, but once I pulled the nails out, I run it through the thickness sander, the beauty comes out. And my point being on that was to people like, oh, well, should we just throw away Dak Prescott? You know, just start all over. And what I'm trying to say is, you know, sometimes you have to put in a little work to get the fittest product. And of course, all the trolls come out. Yeah, we should throw away Dak. But see, people don't seem to understand that you can't just think that you can just grab a quarterback and plug him in and automatically you're going to win the Super Bowl. There's many things that go into that. You know, the Jets seem to think that we've got Aaron Rodgers now. We're plugging him in. And now we're going to go to the Super Bowl. And it doesn't work that way. You know, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers and he hasn't changed too much. He's already talking about, you know, I've gone to more off-season workouts now with the Jets than I did with the Packers. And I'm going to start missing some. Yeah, but you were with the Packers all those years and you knew what the offense was. Now you got new people that they need to get on the same page with you. But be that as it may, that's not my problem to hope. But so many Cowboy fans, for whatever reason, are so looking for anyone else other than Dak Prescott. I literally had a comment that said, what do you know about this quarterback that the Cowboys invited to camp, Matthew McKay. He looks like a slightly better version of Dak Prescott. Hate to tell you guys, he's invited to be a camp body. scout team an extra arm for practice they're not bringing him in to replace Dak Prescott and this is so crazy because the Dallas Cowboys the last two seasons have scored more points per game than any other team in the NFL when Dak Prescott's been the quarterback it's a fact Moving right along, here's the thing that I love. Football 
is a team sport. You need 11 guys on offense and 11 guys on defense to all work together. One guy messes up and the play's messed up. Just is. You can have 10 guys do the perfect thing, but one guy jumps off sides, one guy holds, one guy tips the ball up in the air and the defender catches it. Everybody loses. So players need to understand it's not about me individually. It's about us together. And here's what I love is Tyler Smith, second year guy, drafted in the first round. Automatically, when teams draft you in the first round, you should have a bit of arrogance because you are that dude. You're that guy. You're that guy who they have a fifth-year option on. You're that guy that's making more money than all these other guys that are your peers, that are drafted in your same class. You have more clout. You have more leeway because the team has already invested so much in you. So you can be a little bit more arrogant. But what Tyler Smith said is, just tell me where to go and I'll go. He doesn't care what position he has to play, if it's guard, if it's tackle, if it's whatever. I will do whatever it takes to help my team. Now understand, left tackles get paid more than anybody else on that offensive line. Left tackles are harder to find. Left tackles are a premium. But if he's got to play left guard, hey, I'll sacrifice for the team. And that's what you need in football. Guys that may have to do things that they may not want to do for the betterment of the team. So... We're going to see. This is going to be interesting. I'm still debating on whether or not to go to training camp this year again. But the camp battles this year are going to be huge. The offensive line, we don't know who's going to be the left guard. We know that Terrence Steele is going to be the right tackle. We know Zach Martin is going to be the right guard. But we don't really know for sure who's going to be left tackle. If it's going to be Tyron Smith, if it's going to be Tyler Smith, we don't know who's going to be the left guard. If it's going to be Chima Igato, we don't know what I got from Mr. Roboto. If it's going to be Josh Ball, if it's going to be Tyler Smith, I don't know. But I think. By the time we find out who it's going to be, it's going to be battle-tested in there. I'm sitting here thinking about the defensive line, the edge rushers. Who's going to be the starter between Sam Williams, Dante Fowler, Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, um, Goldston, Sam Williams, Dorrance Armstrong. That's a lot of dudes there that have experience. Guys that have all, with the exception of Sam Williams, he only had four last year, but guys that have had five-plus sacks a season. That's going to be some serious battles. Even the interior defensive line, now with Mozzie Smith and Quentin Bohannon and Navelle Gallimore and O.C. and Hankins. We have a lot of guys who are pretty good that if they don't make it on this roster, that I guarantee you other teams are going to say, we can use that guy. Much like John Ridgway. I'm still mad about John Ridgway. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm still mad about John Ridgway. I'm telling you, he is going to be like Dave Butts for that team. 
It was the dumbest thing we ever did. I don't know what they were thinking on that one. But be it as it may, that's one of the elements that you need to be successful. Is you need a group of guys to come together as a team with a singular goal. Seems like the Cowboys are beginning to put pieces together better than they have in any offseason in a long time. Let's just hope it continues. It's May 8th. 23 days from now, the Cowboys will get another $10 million. <sighs> another $10 million. And we'll see what the Cowboys do with that. But uh, in the meantime, I am going to carry my behind a bit so I can get up about 5.30 in the morning, headed back to work on the red brick house and um, get ready for the schedule release show. Can't wait for that one. All right, good people. You know how we roll. Remember to tell the people you love, you love them. Because you might not get the chance again, and I love you guys. God willing, I'll be here tomorrow to say the same thing. Peace out.